After a number of delays and production problems, X-Men Dark Phoenix has finally hit the big screen, arriving on the 5th of June and costing in a region of $200 million. There was a lack of excitement and hype for it from what I observed online. The trailers they put out were pretty unspectacular for a start, and there wasn't much buzz surrounding it. I'm sure fans knew this film was coming after X-Men Apocalypse, as it sowed the seeds for Jean's eventual transformation into the Phoenix. But I think after Apocalypse, moviegoers' interest in this series was starting to wane and seeing another one that dealt with a storyline that had been tackled before in X-Men The Last Stand, it's difficult to get excited because you know it's going to follow similar plot beats. The critics so far have panned the movie. Others have been less harsh, but overall the general consensus is that it's failed to live up to expectations, and is a disappointing end to the series that has lasted nearly 20 years. With the film's story, it opens in 1975, with eight-year-old Jean Grey inadvertently using a telekinesis to cause a car accident that kills her parents. The doctors don't know what to do with her. Professor Charles Xavier comes to her rescue and takes her to his school for the gifted, where he mentally blocks the accident from her memories and helps her hone her psychic abilities. Jumping to 1992, nine years after Apocalypse, the X-Men are now seen as heroes, and Xavier has a direct line to the president with a swanky X-Phone. The team respond to a distress call from the space shuttle Endeavour, which is critically damaged by solar flare-like energy. The X-Men manage to save all of the astronauts, but Jean ends up absorbing all of the energy at the last minute before they can escape. Jean survives the event and her psychic powers are greatly amplified as a result. At the same time, the mental block placed by Xavier is destroyed, and she finds out that the Professor has been keeping secrets from her. Jean is struggling with her new abilities, and seeks advice from Magneto, but is turned away by Eric after she engages in combat with US military forces. Jean is soon approached by a shape-shifting alien played by Jessica Chastain, who explains to her that she's been possessed by a force of cosmic power, which wiped out her home planet years ago, as it consumes anything it comes into contact with, but has bonded with Jean. The X-Men have to get to Jean before it's too late, and save the planet from this cosmic force inside of her. I've seen all of the X-Men movies at the cinema since the first one was released in 2000. I enjoyed the cartoon series a lot as a kid, I never really got into the comics, I'm not sure why. I played the video games based on them, but that was as far as I went, so the movies were my choice to explore more of the X-Men lore. I've enjoyed all the films, they aren't award winners, I never had an emotional attachment to them, they are just good solid entertainment. There are obvious clunkers along the way, but they are fun nonetheless. I think many of us going into this film would have heard the poor feedback it's already received from critics and fans of the franchise and their disappointment with this finale to the series. So I went into this film with very low expectations and was expecting an average film at best. I do think the early reviews were right, but I still got some enjoyment out of it and don't think it's a bad movie overall, it just doesn't really deliver a satisfying end to this franchise under 20th Century Fox. Sophie Turner as Jean Grey has the whole film resting on her shoulders, which is a lot of pressure for a young actor, but she does a pretty good job with it and shows her tender and angry sides very well. You can see she is battling her personalities as her dark side tries to fight for dominance in her mind, it's just her dialogue is a bit by the numbers. Jennifer Lawrence as Raven doesn't have much to do in this movie and is clearly not interested in reprising her role. I wasn't too keen on the series direction to focus more on Raven as a main character and leader of the X-Men. She is just a shapeshifter and worked best as a supporting character and muscle for Magneto like in the first X-Men trilogy. I think a number of the actors were contractually obligated to return and are just going through the motions in this film. And there does seem to be a lack of passion and energy in their performances. Ty Sheridan for me comes out on top as he really nails the performance of Cyclops and gets a lot more to do in this sequel. I've always been a fan of Cyclops despite him being a bit of a boring character. The opening act with the movie is surprisingly good and well directed, but once Jean has this new power then the movie begins to falter and its wonky structure becomes more apparent. You get a sense that scenes have been trimmed or dropped entirely. There are a few clips in the trailers that don't make the final cut, probably due to the reshoots and apparent change to the ending. Characters appear underdeveloped, the introduction of the alien shapeshifters is not very well implemented and feels shoehorned in. I think it's the first of this new series to tackle the cosmic world of Marvel and doesn't really do a good job of it. It seems to rush through its plot beats pretty quickly just to get to the next act. Granted the film runs at a good length, it doesn't feel too long or too short. I distinctly remember being disappointed at the short length of X-Men The Last Stand. This one just feels like each act is underdeveloped. 
The X-Men series has always had major issues with continuity, characters' backstories and motivations change, and the producers never seem happy with the outfits from film to film. The new X-Men outfits look pretty naff and like cheap cosplay outfits. What happened to the outfits they teased at the end of Apocalypse? Finally we got the costumes that resemble the comics, then they ditched them entirely. These new outfits they only use in the first act, then drop them in favour of their regular clothes, which is probably for the best. The Disney Marvel films do not shy away from the outlandish and colourful outfits, like how they are represented in the comics, but the X-Men series still seem embarrassed to use the comic book costumes. The visual effects are pretty impressive and remain consistent throughout. I quite enjoy the action sequences with the X-Men and Magneto trying to get to Jean as they battle each other in the street. We get to see Cyclops using his pressure blaster far more than ever before. Storm using her lightning attack to the fullest was fun to see. Magneto pulls off some interesting tricks and attacks on the bad guys. Unfortunately Quicksilver is completely shortchanged in this movie and is wounded before it gets going. It's always a joy to watch the X-Men work as a team and see them doing what they do best. This is what you've come to see. And the film deploys some nice moments where we get to see that. But ultimately the action scenes won't save a movie with a flawed screenplay and that has been messed with in the editing process. Another problem with the movie is that it feels very small in scale, and most scenes just end up with people talking in small rooms or corridors. Not every superhero film has to be epic in scale and have huge battles in the streets, but with this being the final film in the series you would at least expect it to end with a big bang, and round up all the characters so everything is resolved. To my surprise, Hans Zimmer has jumped onto the X-Men series and the superhero genre again, despite saying he was done after his experience working on Batman v Superman. Apparently persuaded back into the genre due to the film's story, Hans has provided scores to Batman, Superman, Spider-Man and now X-Men. Hans Zimmer unfortunately ditches all of the themes set up by composer John Ottman and uses his own themes that don't really add much to the film. He provides his more recent style of wallpaper sound that is yet again full of warms. The filmmakers even ditched the opening intro with the X-Men logo, another continuity fail. To give credit, his Dark Phoenix theme, if you can call it that, fits the character but changes the tone of the series to a more depressing note. The score lacks any big heroic themes and marches and is very dour in its style. Overall, it's a forgettable and uninspiring score that could fit any other film and it wouldn't feel out of place. But for the X-Men series, it's clearly a studio choice to play it safe. To round things up, the film is a mildly depressing and underwhelming end to the series, which should have been exciting. It's a real shame. That being said, it's certainly not unwatchable. It's not better or worse than X-Men The Last Stand. The film is essentially a remake. They both have their problems and both don't really deliver a satisfying adaptation of the Dark Phoenix storyline. If you had to pick which one to watch, I would probably say X-Men The Last Stand. The action scenes are certainly more over the top and Jean Grey does appear more of a threat to humanity, despite just standing around looking evil and not doing much. The director of Dark Phoenix, Simon Kinberg, is certainly not a bad director. He does bring over some interesting visuals and set pieces. Some writers don't make that successful transition to becoming directors, but Simon does make the pass, but he definitely needed someone else to jump in and give his script an extra rewrite, and with how the film is underperforming at the box office, he may go back to producing and writing for future productions. The sense of fun and excitement of the previous entries is surprisingly missing for the most part, and you end up going through it feeling entertained in parts, but not really caring what's happening on screen when you are supposed to. So it's not the worst of the franchise, but one of the most forgettable. She's still our friend. She's not Jean anymore. Are you threatening me? That's right. That would be a bad idea. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to see more retrospectives and commentaries. Also click on the bell to be notified of the latest reviews. If you want access to exclusive videos and to watch my content a few days before it's on YouTube, you can head on over to my Patreon. Thank you very much.